after we are done computing the checksum we go ahead and save the checksum inside the TCP header we also have a function called create data I leave this as an exercise to you which just seeds a random number generator and create some random data now moving to the main function to get a flow of the whole logic itself in this particular program just to give you a flavor of how we can do the same thing in a different way instead of mentioning ethernet header ip header etc as unsigned character types i am mentioning them as their original types which is struct tth header star ip header star tcp header star and finally data which is unsigned char star so we create the raw socket and bind the raw socket after this we create the ethernet header exact same function only difference is it returns an struct eth header star instead of unsigned char star go ahead we create the ip header and the tcp header and the data now we create the pseudo header and compute the checksum right as we've already noticed the pseudo header basically consists of part of the ip header and then the tcp segment length and then we basically put in the tcp header and the tcp segment in order to compute the whole tcp checks uh, checksum over this new header once this is done we calculate the packet length which is nothing but the ethernet header ip header tcp header and the data right so the ip header tcp header and data the length of this is encapsulated within the ip header total length field right and if we actually go back you'll notice that in this case the total length field is that of the ip header the tcp header and the data size now we come back here now we allocate memory for the packet the packet which will contain all these headers together and of course it has to be of size packet length which we computed in the previous step then first what we do is copy the ethernet header this would of course have to be in the beginning of the packet and here is where we do it then we go ahead and copy the ip header but after the ethernet header so we take an offset of 14 bytes size of the ethernet header and then go ahead and copy the ip header now then we copy the tcp header after the ip header so right this is where this logic comes in size of ethernet header and then size of the ip header and after that we copy the data after the tcp header so you can see this whole length here right actually there are various ways of doing it we could have also taken the ip total length and subtracted the ip header and the tcp header and then added the ethernet header length you can do it in many ways so i have chosen to do it in a more methodical step by step way so we go ahead take the offset for the ethernet header then the ip header then the tcp header and then go ahead and copy the data after that we send the packet over the wire once again our familiar send raw packet function and after which we go ahead and free all the headers and close the socket so now let's go ahead and try and run this program let's compile it let's make sure our filtering mechanisms are in place then let's run this program so as you can see 
a packet was sent from 192.168.0.11 to sorry from 192.168.0.10 to 192.168.0.11 and this is actually the packet which we just formulated so you can actually see that the MAC address is what we had spoofed you can have a closer look at the MAC address destination source and IP so it's exactly what we mentioned while creating the Ethernet header and then the IP header once again 20 bytes total length of 140 bytes TTL is 11 identification field is 11 right and we have the source and the destination IP addresses checksum is also correct which is good news we've computed it right and then we can go ahead and see the TCP source port is 80 destination is 100 once again this is what we've created sequence number next sequence number it's actually relative so that is why you see a 0 and 100 because it's a sin packet as you can see so that's how the computation starts window size once again we had mentioned is 100 and that's what we see the checksum is correct and here is the data because we mentioned the source port to be 80 that's why it considers the data to be HTTP because that is the HTTP port and unfortunately here I'm sure it cannot interpret the data so it uh, just puts it as data as 100 bytes so right now if you do the math it sort of works out because 100 bytes is the data 2020 are the IP and TCP header and 14 is the Ethernet header so this brings us to a total of 154 bytes alternately we could have also used TCP dump and in which we see the same thing 192.168.0.10 HTTP going to 198.162.0.11 new ACCT this is maybe a service name for port number 100 checksum everything is right and this is the hex dump of the packet right I think the visual ethereal gives us much more information right than the TCP dump utility but I think both have their own advantages and disadvantages with this I just want to summarize this uh, example this is a very important example because we have created all headers along with the data so we went ahead and created individual headers separately the ethernet header IP TCP and data then we computed the IP checksum over the IP header the TCP checksum over the small pseudo header borrowed from the IP header which consisted of the source IP destination IP the reserved field the protocol and the TCP segment length and then the TCP header and the TCP data so over these three things we computed the checksum stored it in the TCP checksum field and then appended the data to that and sent out the whole packet and that is what we are seeing in the output here well with this I'd like to end this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll talk about how to construct an entire packet in which we also mention the headers as data structures inside our own program itself and not use the headers defined in the include files thank you